What makes a product good? What makes it special? Does it stand out? Does it change things? Does it break the mold? Well, what about if it made the mold in the first place and then broke that mold? This beauty has the insane 13900KS under the hood. But what if I swap that out for the new 14700K? Bad idea or strategic downgrade? Let's find out. This is the Falcon Northwest Talon. I honestly would have talked a lot more about Falcon Northwest if I weren't concerned that, oh, I'm a little bit biased, and that's a bad thing to be when it comes to being a person on the internet who talks about products that people might buy. Teenage me, back in the 90s, was dying to have a Falcon Northwest Mach 5. I remember being in Walden Books, looking through PC magazines, and bam, there was in all its glory. I want that gaming PC, and prior to April of 1992, those two words didn't really go together. There were PCs that could play games, but Kelt Reeves felt like they weren't enough. When he wanted to do his uh, flight simulators, he wanted them to absolutely rip. So he made for himself and his buddies some PCs that were better than any others when it came to gaming. And he said, well, you know what? Let's do this forever. And thus the concept of a pre-built gaming PC was born. It wouldn't be till 1996 that any real competition showed up with Alienware. We know, <laughs> we know where that went. Competitors came and went. Falcon Northwest and Kelt Reeves at the helm stayed true to the goal to make the absolute most cutting edge performant and beautiful machines possible, never leaving any aspect of it behind. There's just something about when you take an object, an item, and you elevate it, you make it better. This will do the job, but there's a joy in using something that has care put into it. Care and attention and thought and ingenuity. This is not the most insane looking PC out there, is it? It's subtle, classy. It has RGB, but it's not trying to fry your rods and cones with it. When you look at this, it just looks like a, a black box, a gorgeous one, right? The fit and finish is amazing. It's, it's built like a tank. That is thick aluminum plating. This takes the medium mid tower size chassis and it does away with the sort of easy school of thought when it comes to airflow. You see, airflow is a problem. It tends to be the path of least resistance to just put a lot of holes on there and then a bunch of fans and then you have air movement, but that's not airflow. No, airflow is supposed to be purposeful, designed. And when you look here, this is, seems to be a solid front panel. No, large opening in the bottom, side venting on both sides, does a great job. This has a 13900KS for the 13th gen Intel processors, the absolute top dog, and notoriously, very difficult to cool, but it does it with a 280 millimeter all-in-one liquid cooler. Add to that, 4090. Only being cooled by the Founders Edition stock cooling solution. This whole time, I have been running Cinebench R23 with a PC right next to me. And I'm barely gonna have to work on this sound at all. It's just a terrible room for acoustics. I haven't done any treatment in here. That's pretty much all I gotta worry about. Everything Falcon Northwest does is by design. And to think, all of this from a coffee company. <laughs> okay, so that's just me being cheeky. But what are we here to do today? Are we here for me just to, to speak about Falcon Northwest? Well, I could do that all day, but that's not what I'm going to do. Because the 13900KS is coming out of this system and into it is going the 14700K. The 14700K is Interesting, because most of the 14th gen processor lineup are simply refreshes. But the 14700K, the i7, it actually got a solid upgrade. We'll talk a little bit more about that later. Uh, but what we need to do first 
is we need to test out a few things with a 13900KS before we swap this out. Let's go ahead and do that. We're gonna run a few other tests and some gaming stuff first, and then it's gonna be time to pop this thing in there and uh, we'll talk about what 14th gen has in store for you if you're in the market for a new gaming PC or looking to upgrade your, say, 12th gen Intel gaming PC. Let's go, nerds. But we're gonna play a few games. I might even throw CS2 in there. I haven't played Counter-Strike in a really long time, but we'll, we'll see how it goes. Uh, we're gonna start it off with Starfield, though, because that's been my current addiction. Whenever I actually do have some time to game, that's what I've been playing. So, let's check it out. Let's speed this up a bit. Let's go. Oh, hey, look at this amazing looking ship. Wow, I wonder who built that thing. Uh, we'll, we'll, uh, we'll finish this up by taking this bird out right here and, uh, and see how she flies. Look at those trails, man. Hell yeah. It's a good game. It feels good every time you do that. So this thing has more powerful engines than the other one, and it is slower. Todd Howard, why I gotta be like that, man? There's our number. Average was 132, with minimum being 60 and max being 155. Okay, let's see what I can do about getting uh, Counter-Strike 2 going. Uh, and yeah, the controls here are uh, not something I'm used to anymore. But uh, let's see, hello. Well, we're over 300, we're in 4K, by the way. The settings are all pretty much ultra everything. Yeah, I can't buy a smoke grenade yet, so. Oh, that was not where I wanted that to be, but let's see what happens. Frame rate, 322, down to 275, 265, 253. Wow, that's over 100 FPS dropped. Nobody who's serious about competition would be uh, would be playing at 4K Ultra, right? We're gonna be running Cinebench R23, and uh, we're gonna run the multi-core test. Now, a couple of things I wanna go over that I went over previously that I just wanna get out of the way. I'm not running this on a test bench. I'm not running it on a fresh build. I've been using this PC since like February. And then a couple months after that, it became my main PC when I was like, this thing is just rock solid. I want to use this. But what it means to these tests is that this is not your standard, hey, we're going to benchmark this new CPU. No. Um, this is going to be more in, along the lines of like, what's the P what's the 14700K going to run like on a PC that's already been running for a while as it, you know, run what you brung, which is what most of you guys would do if you were upgrading, say, from a 12700K to a 14700K. Let's get the test started, and then I'll, we'll come back here, and we're gonna run, run it for 10 minutes. And I'll go over a few more things while that's running in the background. And you'll hear that, well, you won't hear much, actually. Okay, so we're ready to go, and uh, what you need to do when you, if you wanna do something like this, because, you know, both of these things are free. Hardware Info 64 and Cinebench R23 are free. We reset our min-max average values and timer right there. And then you hit start multi-core and you might want to set it to 10 minutes. And looking at this, uh, you can basically see that the temperatures jump up pretty quickly. That's what happens because this is an unrealistic uh, workload for a CPU to be running for 10 minutes solid. Uh, your average person's not going to do that. So that's why it makes a good benchmark. It really is just sort of an extreme, an extreme situation there. So there you go. Actually, we're beating our last result, but we'll get to that. Okay, so what we're looking at here is the i7. And the i7 was always the one step just below the absolute top dog of the i9. Actually, a while back, i7 was the top dog. And then they're like, you know what? We can add two to that. If, you're, if you currently have a 13700K, you can probably disregard this, 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 this launch even though they added cores to this because they did and we'll go over that you still have a very up-to-date processor and don't let any marketing or reviews or charts or anything make you feel like man i gotta upgrade my less than one year old cpu Upgra upgrades should happen 
when you feel like they need to. Get your money's worth out of your parts. Now, if you're on a 12700K, maybe you would want to do that because it's all LGA 1700. Yes, this, this is just a refresh. 14th gen is mostly a refresh of 13th gen, except for the 14700K, which is why we're interested in it. But that means that that's kind of a third generation or at least 2.5 generations for the same socket. That's that's uh, getting away from Intel's MO there, which is great. I love to see that. And someone on a 12700K or 12600K can look at the 14700K as a solid upgrade. One thing that all of these processors have in common, 12700K, 12900K, 13700K, 13900K, 14700K, and 14900K. All of them have the same number of performance cores, eight performance cores. Now, the thing is, if you're gaming, that's pretty much all you need. You don't need a ton of efficiency cores. Four would do it for you, right? However, uh, when it came time to do the next generation in, of hybrid architecture Intel CPUs with the 13th gen processors, what did they do to upgrade the, 12, the 13700K? Well, just to be clear really quick, before we move on, the 12700K had a base frequencies of 3.6 gigahertz and 2.7 gigahertz on the performance cores and efficiency cores, respectively, okay? With the max turbo frequency being at 4.9 gigahertz on the performance cores, which is where the max turbo frequency is gonna matter most. And there was also a Turbo Boost Max technology 3.0 that got it up you know, 0.1 more gigahertz uh, to 5.0. Well, so that was kind of the focus when it came to doing the 13700K, except that it wasn't the only focus there. 13700K also got eight efficiency cores. So it became a 16 core processor. So doubling the efficiency cores does more work to take the workload off of the performance cores so it can focus on your front and center applications, processes, gaming, streaming, things like that. Um, you know, if you're compiling code, doing things like that, the other cores will step in to help out, but the you know performance cores are going to be doing the more more heavy lifting. Now they also increased frequencies and power usage as well. That was a big thing with uh, I mean well with 13th gen was a, a step up in power usage, and sort of a everybody started to step back and be like, oh these are just going to run at like 95 to 100 degrees Celsius, and based on your cooling, we'll see how they do. Yeah, that was a bit of a paradigm shift that they had started a bit with 12th gen and then. They absolutely actually started with 12th gen and then they increased with 13th gen. 14th gen will be no exception. We'll get back to this in a second. Um, the test finished, so we're gonna take a look at it. So you, you gotta be careful about looking at this while it's collapsed instead of expanding it because you'll think, oh man, they all hit 6,000. No, that was really just one of them with the um, uh, Performance Core 5 right here. But yeah, you'll see that this one, P Core 5, did hit 6,000 megahertz right there. But you'll see it was passing the work around. And yes, absolutely, P-Core 5 did hit that 100 degrees Celsius. But this is a good sign. You want to know that your PC can do this because there's a specific technology there that assesses your power delivery, the power budget that's available, and the cooling capacity, the cooling capabilities of your system that you have either built or bought. And based on that, you will or won't get 6,000 megahertz or six gigahertz. We did. So that means this PC is up to the task. Is it going to run at that forever? Absolutely not. You do not need it to do that. If you look here, the cooling is fairly is, is very effective because even though you'll see CPU package at 100 degrees Celsius, like don't just leave that collapsed, expand this. Like look at this here. Actually see how many of your cores were hitting it. And of course, the performance cores were doing that. They're designed to. The CPU is designed to run at around 100 degrees Celsius, and frequencies will change based on how good your cooling is. But let's go ahead and uh, we're gonna go to the, to the workbench and we're going to do this upgrade and see how it goes.
All right, now that that's done, we can get down to brass tacks and we're gonna make this quicker. But this should be, this is something I wanna go over first. I wanna give you some spoilers uh, because of the, uh, the, the testing that they do over at Falcon Northwest, Kelt was kind enough to provide me with their results. And uh, the thing is, I don't have a 13700K to compare the 14700K to, as I mentioned earlier. For me, what I would actually like to test it against is a 12700K, because if, if I see someone with a 13700K and they're like, should I get, no, you should not update. I mean, should anyone even consider doing what I'm doing, take out a 13900KS and put in a 14700K? No, unless there's an actual architectural change, which there's not here, it's mostly a refresh, other than a, a couple more efficiency cores in this one, there's really not much change. And in gaming, you're not gonna notice that because they don't help that much in gaming. When it comes to any application that uses a lot of cores and threads, that's where the benefits are gonna be. So uh, Cinebench is is one versus a 13700K, the, the 14700K, uh, beats it out. Let's take a look at the numbers that they got over at Falcon Northwest though. So looking at this right here, uh, it focuses on Cinebench mostly, which is where you would see the benefits. So if you're doing something like, if you're doing something like Cinema 4D, then you would benefit from it. Blender, you'll benefit from it. What we're looking at here is a 22% increase in performance from the 13700K to the 14700K in Falcon Northwest's testing, all right? Uh, the 10 minute score, 18% increase in performance. So single pass versus 10 minutes, the increase in performance dips. Why would that be? Well, if you look at the power draw, which is uh, down here, the max wattage, um, you'll notice that it is higher. So because of that, it's gonna put out more heat. And because of that, it will over time start to lower frequencies, things like that. So the gap will decrease. Uh, that's the thing. The 13900KS has this extreme power delivery profile, max turbo wattage, uh, of 320 watts. That turns into heat. That's why it's so hard to cool that one. So seeing this thing and with a 10 minute Cinebench uh, average wattage of 259, and it nearly has the same number of cores. It's only short by four cores, four efficiency cores. When you're generating heat in an enclosed room like this one, it gets hotter in the room. The hotter the CPU is running, the hotter the room is going to get. And it does get pretty toasty in here sometimes. I'm thinking I'm actually going to leave the 14700K in there. Prime 95 average clock. Um, you can see the clock increase here, but there's apparently a slight throttle with the 14700K dropping a full 100 megahertz over the course of an hour. But that's that's Prime 95 running for over an hour. You're not going to use it like that. It's, it's a benchmark. Uh, the single core performance, not impressive. 1% e increase in performance, but again, that's because this is just a refresh. There's not a, there's not a significant change, an architectural change. Uh, looking here, if there's anything else, 9% increase in power, 9% increase in max power. So that kind of scales right there. Okay, so let's just go ahead and we'll go ahead and jump into Starfield and uh, putter around in New Atlantis and then we'll move on. But thank you very much, Kelp, for the notes here because I did not have a 13700K to test it against, so. I do appreciate that. I've never done a review like this, or I've never done a video like this, and I wanted this to actually be more about the Falcon Northwest PC than just about the CPU, but it seemed like a really fun way to do it. And uh, I was interested in the 14700K. I thought like, hey, more efficiency cores, I think that's the smart thing to do for the kind of stuff that I do on my PC. So lower temps, lower power draw, and similar performance, I think sounds pretty good. Fun fact, if you take, if you go into photo mode and take photos in Starfield, uh, it can, they, they use them as uh, loading screens. Remember, among the i7s and the i9s uh, of these last three generations, they always have eight performance cores. And performance is gonna be pretty similar unless you like to run a lot of background tasks, in which case that's just gonna be what happens is that those are handled better by the um, uh, by CPUs that have more efficiency cores to take on those background tasks while your performance cores take care of the main gaming. So just keep in mind that when you're when you're looking at processors, you, you don't necessarily need to get the the most powerful one that you can afford. A lot of times the system is should be about balance, and most people don't need an i9. That's going to be if you're if you're doing things like you're doing a lot of content creation, doing a lot of this other stuff. 
you just you need a lot of cores and you know what you're just going for the i9 whatever go for it sure but the 14700k is only four efficiency cores behind now that's the thing they're sort of removing that separation in the product stack i know i realized by the way in this one video my lighting has changed like three times click thanks for getting right in front of them you idiot you have a gun why would you run up to somebody when you have a gun okay so now we're gonna run uh let's get hardware info 64 up and running on the right side here sensors only thank you very much i realized they didn't scroll down to where the power draw was when i was running the 13900ks but it's generally around 300 watts or a little bit higher. So with, with it being Cinebench R23, we can reasonably assume that's what happened. But yeah, it looks like the maximum CPU package jumps up to 104 and then gets under control. Not sure what's going on there, but I mean, the average is was 85. Okay, we got a 32366. Now, I'm gonna remind you of something here. When we were looking at this and the Cinebench uh, single pass scores, 34,693, 2,000 points higher, more or less, right? That's on a test bench, right? Or in a, in a clean install of Windows without a ton of bad. This is just my PC that I do all my work in, all my gaming in, all of that on the Talon that I have here. So yeah, those processes running in the background, plus the fact that I'm recording on it, don't be surprised when the scores aren't what you see here. I'm, I'm glad that I have this though, because with this, I'm able to show you guys some independent, this is independent testing because it's not Intel. This was a system integrator doing this. Um, so it is in that way, it's, it's third party testing, it's just not my third party testing. But yeah, I mean, so you have an idea of how would it run if it was on a fresh install of Windows on a test bench, who is this for? Who is the, uh, let's make it two separate questions. Who is the Talon for? Who's the, who's the Falcon Northwest Talon and Falcon Northwest in general, in general is an SI. And who is the 14700K for? Most people who want to get into, like they want to do a, a rad gaming PC, but they also want to do a decent amount of content creation, video editing, stuff like that. So if you're in that position where you want to game and stream, make content, stuff like that, and it's honestly a really strong contender for that. I'm not going to be all cynical about it just because it's not a huge leap forward in, in performance. So I think it's in a really good place. I, I'm interested. I mean, of course, I always thought the 13600K was a great CPU for that same reason. But now the 14700K has distanced itself just that much more from the i5. Now, the other question. Who is Falcon Northwest for? For one thing, you need to like the way it looks. And yes, you can customize that. Their, their, their UV printing is amazing. I hope you like that black case because that's what they all are. You just can print on it. If you want something more customizable with like a ton of RGB everywhere, all that, not the right option for you. If you want something where you know you're spending more money to get better service, but you're gonna get incredible service and incredible reliability, and you're willing to pay for that. You don't want downtime. You don't wanna have to worry about that kind of thing. Uh, you want to be able for the first year to just overnight it to them and that on their, you know, they foot the bill and then they overnight it right back right after they fixed it for you. You want that? Then you will, you will find value in that. You do also have to remember that the price of entry for Falcon Northwest is going to be pretty high, but a better experience. That's the true thing that makes any item, any product more than the sum of its parts. The team over at Falcon Northwest have invested a lot of time and energy into cultivating a very specific experience for their customers, okay? And we're talking about people like, you know, Dr. Lisa Sue, uh, Gabe Newell, Jack Black, I mean, Nathan Fillion, Alan Tudyk, a lot of people that I admire are like, yeah, Falcon Northwest, that's for me. When it comes to SIs, 
Falcon Northwest, they're kind of the rock stars, the originators. And um, it, it's, you can't hate on them, man. You can try, but they dotted their I's, they crossed their T's. Um, but for people who want more customization or you want to have, no, I don't want to use an ASUS motherboard. Oh, well, too bad. That's what we get because we have tested it super thoroughly. Okay, you go elsewhere. And that's not a bad thing. It's a huge industry with lots of different companies that do things differently and do things their own way. And one of them is going to vibe with you. But if when you were looking at this just before or any of the montage footage, or anything like that, and you were just like, damn, that thing looks built like a tank. It's like the the lines, the the the, the quality. So previ so previously, Falcon Northwest would send out these actual like mouse pad mouse pads, like small ones that had kind of the hard plastic top, which is good for gaming. Uh, but now they're sending out these new desk pads. And this thing feels amazing. Like I've never felt a surface like this one on a desk pad. They're usually kind of, well, a little softer. If you want to get an idea of what the unboxing experience is like for Falcon Northwest PC, and you should because it's it's one of it's it's probably the best packaged PC I've ever seen. It is so secure. You got to check it out. Click on this right here. This is a stream from when I unboxed the uh, and tested the previous system, and um, check that out. And I you know, I should go in there and at least put one timestamp in the description so that there's that one thing. Okay, I actually unbox it here just so you guys can check it out. It's really, really cool. But I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Um, I think that I might actually be maybe keeping this this processor in this system. I may just uh, keep it in there and use less, you know, have less power usage here. Still good video editing stuff. I'm going to give it a roll. I'm going to give it a run for its money, see how it does. And I'll get back to you all on that. Anyway, in the meantime, uh, that's going to be it for this video. And until the next one, take care.